When I think of like Montana craft beer culture, uh, besides the, the great beer that's getting put out there, it's, I got an awesome sense of community. Uh, you know, in Montana, I think we're, we're really lucky. There are a ton of great breweries. Uh, when I travel to other states, I'm always kind of surprised at how lucky we really are at the quality of beer that's produced in this state. You know, I, I just think we're really fortunate in Montana. I think we're putting out some of the best beer in the country, and a lot of it is we've got amazing ingredients here. We've got really good water. Get, we have the best barley in the world when it comes to making beer. Um, there's, I think there's actually a, a big beer company has a commercial stating that, and they're based at, on the other side of the country. We get people from out of state, they come in, they'll have three beers and you bring them up and they go, no, 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 no. I, I had three. And they, they think it's the price of one, you know? So it, we've got very affordable, high quality craft beer. And it's part of Montana, you know, we're known for having awesome breweries in a lot of places, particularly small towns. I, I think that the, the craft beer culture is definitely one of uh, excellent quality, good variety. Um, it, yeah, it's amazing. Montana makes amazing beer. And the customers know it. Customers know good beer in this state, they really do. We would, we would like to be known as one of the breweries in the state that people want to come and visit because they've heard about us, they've heard about our quality. Um, we, want, we want to be that destination brewery that it's a cool place to go see and you've heard so much about. And that's, that's what really, that's what I'm hoping for. I'm Scott Hansing, one of the co-owners of Missouri River Brewing. I am Adam Hutchinson, one of four owners of the Missouri River Brewing Company in East Helena, Montana. Tim Chisman, head brewer and managing partner at Blackfoot River Brewing Company here in Helena, Montana. So my name is uh, Nick Deal. I'm the owner, head brewer at Copper Pearl Brewing in Helena, Montana. Uh, I'm Ethan Kohotek, co-owner of Ten Mile Creek Brewery in Helena, Montana. Max Pigman, Lewis and Clark Brewing Company, Helena, Montana. I, th I believe we've carved out a nice niche of, of creating really drinkable beers. Uh, and we still are going to do some crazy stuff once in a while. Got our pumpkin ale coming out next week, which is always a really popular beer, actually this week. And uh, our neighborhood IPA, which of course we started uh, 16 years ago, where we taught people how to plant hops in their backyard and then how to harvest those, bring them in, and we all just throw them all into the brew. You never know what it's going to taste like. This year we turned it into a hazy. It's been super popular. So, a combination of really good, consistent quality of our packaged product and then being able to innovate and come up with new products, new beers on a regular basis. Um, for us, I think it's, uh, it's a couple of things. It's, it's that uh, we do quite a bit of different styles. We're not just basically, you know, and, and our beers are constantly changing. It's not like we just came up with, uh, with eight flagships and that's what we have on tap whenever you come here and there might be one or two changes. We have about four or five flagships and then the other six or seven handles that we have are constantly changing. The other thing that makes us unique is we only have 12 handles. Our number one seller is our Mexican lager. When we were conceptualizing Copper Furrow Brewing and getting ready to open, we wanted to come out with some unique beers. And, you know, four years ago when, when, when we were going through this process, we didn't know a whole lot of people, at least in Montana, that were making a Mexican lager. And we thought it was one way that we could be diverse. But we thought it would be a summer beer. We, re we, uh, we opened in June and released it pretty soon after we opened. And by the end of August, we realized we can't pull this thing off because it was 
it was sales wise better than number two and number three combined you know it was just really it was really selling we're right downtown in the walking mall in helena montana so that's kind of cool and we've got a big open space um, which is kind of nice we can we can spread out into the outdoor into the walking mall and then you know just our styles of beer you know we kind of in we kind of do a lot of hazy ipas a lot of sours um, uh, that's kind of what we're known for in this town at least so i think with five breweries making awesome beer in town like we all kind of have to have our little niche that we can slither through Well, for us at the Blackfoot, it's our single malt IPA. It was uh, Brian and Brad and Greg, the three founders of the company. Um, they were big time home brewers and they loved the Maris Otter malt. And that is the malt we use in the single malt. And so they, they came up with that recipe and we've had little tweaks here and there, but it's virtually the the same beer as it's always been and you know it's stuck and people love it so we keep making it. I, I think that some of the things that we've always focused on is a great tap room, a great place for people to come and hang out. We, we don't have televisions and we don't ever plan on getting them. This is about a place for people to come and meet up with friends, hang out, chat over beer and provide excellent service. And then, you know, we really focus on quality and variety. We, you know, we're not a growth focused company. We'd rather make better beer than more beer. And uh, we make about 45 different beers in a year and different, not necessarily different styles, but different beers. And so we're always trying to, to keep that variety up for our customers. What's been very interesting in our first month of business is that we have consistently six, seven, eight different beers that are all uh, alternatingly popular depending on the day. So our, our, our range of styles has been really popular to a lot of different people. We, ha we have a very different atmosphere than any other brewery in the state, I think. Um, we're getting a lot of compliments on just, just the design, um, the vibe with it. Um, we, we just, we want to have a really cool place to hang out. And during the build of this, we used to do employ our work meetings at Crooked Furrow. You know, there'd be times where we would go to 10 Mile to sit down and discuss, you know, things. We, the, all of those houses were, were fabulous. During grand opening week, every single one of them was down here hanging out and they were congratulating us and offering a hand to where it's, you know, if you guys need assistance with this or that, pay attention to you know, these things that could cause problems for you. And Lewis and Clark was down here offering to give us growler caps because we were almost out of growler caps. And so uh, I, we really appreciate all the other local breweries. It's definitely, um, the brewing industry is a community. It's um, it's not it's not like fiercely competitive, cutthroat competitive. At least here in Montana, or I know that, or in Helena, I should say. I can't really speak to other places. I know that some places are just not that way. But you know, I, there's been multiple times where I was you know going to get ready to brew the next day and realized I'm I'm out of a certain kind of malt, and so I uh, reached out to either you know guys at Ten Mile or Lewis Clark or whatever, and and. And yeah, we got it, and you know, or and they've they've done the same with me, you know. For the most part, we're all friendly with each other. I mean, so when we like, for instance, when we started five years ago, uh, I mean, we started building this place six years ago, I guess. Uh, you know, we had tons of help from both Blackfoot and Lewis and Clark, and I mean, they've, you know, they've been around for 20 plus years at the time, and I mean, that was that was. Just, vital for us to like figure out certain things how are we going to plumb this how are we going to do that um like that that open bookness that we have in this industry uh you don't see that a lot and a lot of people it's kind of a cliche answer but it, it it's a real thing that like we can go to you can go to any brewery in this state and you know maybe except a few recipe questions i mean everything is an open book i mean we're willing to help 
about it. I think people are really helpful. Um, it's kind of like free information, you know? You ask the question, you're gonna get the answer, and um, if you need some help, they're gonna provide it. So uh, it's great. And I think the MBA does a really good job of bringing breweries and brewers together to have just just the opportunity to, to talk and get together and talk about beer and what's going on. Yeah, you know, I, I heard a, an interesting statement years ago at one of the craft brewers conferences that I thought was really cool and it has a little bit of a swear word in it, but it the, the craft beer industry is like 99% asshole free, we call it. I mean, meaning that we really do want to help each other. And I think when you see people, you know, our breweries like us loaning, uh, whether it be raw materials or us borrowing raw materials, it wasn't long ago we went down to Bozone and borrowed some can lids because we ran out and the shipping situation has been tough on some of those things. Uh, and so we do that back and forth with breweries across the state. And it's never been one of those things like, ooh, well, maybe I won't give it to you because then you can't make beer. And it, that's just not part of the lexicon at all. I think we want to support each other. We want to help each other. Obviously, there's some friendly competition when it comes to draft handles when you go into a bar. But I would much rather fight for an out-of-state craft handle if I'm trying to get a new product on tap in a bar than try to kick off a Montana handle in order to do that. So I, I think we all kind of have that respect for each other. There's still some excitement in the market. Uh, you know, we have a new brewery that opened up out in East Helena, Missouri River Brewing, and there seems to be a, a demand for new stuff. Uh, it's just a matter of whether or not we can navigate through these uh, weird times that we're in right now. I mean, I think Helena, uh, East Helena too, it's, it's just a, people want to look for, especially in today's world of the pandemic, it's nice to be able to ha have a place to relax and forget forget the craziness for a little while. We were able to open with COVID in place, knowing exactly how it needed to be, with the plan to how do we come back from this later. So in a sense, our business actually grows once the pandemic ends. Um, we want everyone to come in and enjoy themselves, but at the same time, you know, we have guidelines that we have to abide by to where it's, you know, we need you to have a seat can't have you standing at the bar, we, you know, we need you to wear a mask if you're traveling from here to there. Yeah, COVID, it's been hard. Um, you know, the bars and restaurants aren't as busy. The restaurant industry is one of the hardest hit industries in the, in the country right now. Um, and so we're not selling as much beer to the bars and restaurants, which is a big part of our business. So. Uh, that's been challenging and kind of sad just to see the economy and uh, small businesses just get hit all across the board. And you know, our, our customers have been fantastic. They're, they're all willing to, to wear masks when they come in and um, you know, social distance the best they can. And everybody's trying their best at, when they come in here and we really appreciate that. So. Um, it has been hard and we're all ready for it to be over. We went into COVID fairly well situated and so we were able to purchase a canner and that was, that's been, it, now it didn't show up till, till middle of the summer but w since we got it in it's, it's definitely been super helpful. It's a little bit scary for us being that our tap room is not very big, we rely on a lot of our patio space. It's hard to see people come in and all everyone the tables are taken and as the temperatures get colder and they don't want to sit outside so they got they, they either they either have to tough it or they turn around and walk out the door and that's that's as a business owner that's always really hard to see. Well, uh, it's kind of a uh, a double-edged sword on the uh, production side of the house, which means the cans that are going out to our six state distribution footprint, our can sales have actually gone up uh, considerably. 
uh, because people are more likely to buy six packs and 12 packs. For example, the Miner's Gold 12 packs are up over 50% this year. So people are really buying higher quantities and they're drinking at home and we get that. Unfortunately, that's, that's took a, we took a big hit on the retail side, the side that you're looking at here. Uh, we're down probably 35% so far this year. And worse than that is on the production side, the kegs that we were sending out to bars and restaurants in our distribution footprint, unfortunately, they've all felt the same thing. And so our keg sales are, are down dramatically and the draft is really uh, the best way for us to make margin and the best way for us to make money in this business because we have a refillable container. We get those kegs back, we clean them, we refill them, and we send them back out. Whereas the cans, sure, they can get recycled, but uh, the cost of the packaging itself is, uh, is quite a bit higher than just putting the beer into a keg and, and having someone pour it on tap. Uh, I'd say the craft beer industry in Montana is nervous right now, just because there's a, there's certainly a sense of how long is this going to go on and, and could we potentially go backwards, which would be uh, really damaging, especially to those people that don't have the luxury that we do of putting our beer into a package. I mean, when we shut down uh, in the spring for COVID, uh, we were immediately able to distribute that beer into cans instead of into kegs. Uh, whereas if we were only selling keg beer or only selling out of a tap room, which a lot of small Montana breweries are doing, it would be very difficult. Uh, I think you'd have to make some really tough choices because once that revenue drives up, dry, you just don't have the money to pay the bills. And so uh, I think the Brewers Association nationally is estimating somewhere around 25 to 30 percent of the breweries may close in the next six months to 12 months. Uh, I haven't seen any numbers for Montana, but I have seen a few breweries pop up for sale and and one or two looking like they're closing. There, I think the breweries get caught up in this, like I need, you know, the next big tank so I can get more accounts, or I need the, you know, the to expand my building, or I need, you know, the canning thing was a big thing for us. So, I, you know, we've kind of got the little, we need to do something different out of our system. But at the same time, for us, it's just more about trying to improve the beer and trying to improve the the overall customer experience here. You know, I think like most people, we're just kind of taking things a day at a time and trying to figure out um, how we all get through this. But, you know, I, I would expect uh, from the Blackfoot a lot of more of the same. We're going we're gonna to keep trying to have great beer, great service, uh, excellent variety, and um, just keep doing that. You know, keep it, keep it small, keep it local, that sort of thing. I'm optimistic we're going to rebound. I mean, as, as a whole, not just in this industry, you know, people are thinking more locally than they ever have, you know, and I think we're going to continue with the growth that we had. We'll get out of it at some point. You know, I think we'll continue to see it grow. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see 125 breweries in Montana. Uh, I think there's some, some markets that would justify another brewery if there's only one or maybe the first brewery in some of these small towns. I think markets like Phillipsburg and they make some great beer over there too have shown that a brewery can be a, a complete anchor for a town and really help that town thrive because there are a significant number of people that will go visit a town just to check out the breweries. And while they're there, they might stop at a few other places in that town. So I think it's good for tourism overall and it's good for Montana. Uh, and I, hey, I, I wish them all well. At, at this point, uh, I, I certainly wouldn't say pull up the ladder, I'm on board. Uh, I, if anybody asks, I say, hey, if you need, you need some information, you need some help, I'm happy to, to give you that advice. But it is a different market than it was when there was 12 breweries or 15 breweries or 20 breweries. And that's just, uh, just a fact. It's just mathematical numbers. And, you know, it is getting a little more difficult to distribute the product. If you make a great product and you've got a model that you're going to create all your revenue and take care of your people, on site, they have at it.
here in Helena. We've got, sorry, flies. We've got a, <laughs> oh my God, <laughs> just picked me all of a sudden. No, basically it's, it's to, to uh, it's to placate Boston Beer Company more than anything. Right. BA, the BA's definition. Did you get him? Yeah. That awesome? yeah. yeah, he's right there. <laughs> That's a story that requires a lot of editing. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, I'm going to come up with completely different answers. <laughs> yeah. What's awesome about you guys? None of that shit that Scott said. <laughs> You know, I think our decor is, you know, every brewery's different. Uh, we kind of went with like an industrial wood look, um, similar to some other breweries in the state, I think. I think it's like contract, you have to have corrugated metal in a brewery in Montana. Um, people are really open. They like to talk about beer. And we like to have people to talk to, talk about beer with, you know? I know my wife's sick of hearing about it, so. <laughs> a lot of R&D goes into uh, owning a brewery. Um, at least that's what we, tell our wives and parents. Um, but, uh, well, that was easy. That was just a bad, right? No. <laughs>